Dear students, welcome to the session on Convolution Theorem. In the previous videos, we learned how to solve inverse Laplace transform for a given problem using partial fractions. There, we see three different kinds. The first one is linear factors. The second one is problems with repeated factors. And the third one, problems with non-factorizable terms. And in today's session, we are going to see how to solve inverse Laplace transform using the definition of convolutions of two functions and convolution theorem. Let us go into the session. Before that, just have a quick recap on the inverse formulas which will be helpful for our problem solving. Now, I am going to take two functions f of t and g of t. Then we are going to define the convolution of these two functions. The convolution of two functions f of t and g of t is defined by the notation star is equal to integral 0 to t f of u into g of t minus u du. You can see the typed version. This is known as convolution of two functions. Convolution of two functions satisfies commutative property. That means if you do the operation f of t star g of t is always is equal to g of t star f of t. The reason for mentioning this property whenever we go for the problem solving session it is very important which should be taken as f of t and which function should be taken as g of t. Always take a big or tough function as f of t and then the easy function as g of t. For example, suppose you take f of t is e power a t and g of t is sin b t. Then f of t star g of t, it is going to be integral 0 to t. Now we have to write f of t as f of u. So e power a u. And in the case of g of t, we have to write g of t minus u. Sin b t minus u du. In this case, now we have to apply the formula sin a minus b. And then we have to expand it. We get two integrals. So, it is very tough. Now, suppose I am taking f of t as sin b t and g of t as e power a t. Now, f of t star g of t is equal to integral 0 to t. Sin b t will become sin b u e power a t that is g of t will become g of t minus u. So, a into t minus u du. I can easily tackle this. If I split this, I will get e power a t into e power minus a u. e power a t is completely a constant. It does not depends on u. I can take this out and I can easily use the formula to get the solution. So, just remember always take the big or tough function as f of t, the simpler function as g of t. So, it is very helpful for solving the problems. Next, we are going for the convolution theorem. Suppose you take two functions f of t and g of t defined for t greater than or equal to 0, then L of f of t star g of t, that is Laplace transform of convolution of two functions f of t star g of t is L of f of t into L of g of t. But in the case of problem solving, we are not going to use Laplace transform. We are going to use inverse Laplace transform. Let us write the results. So, I am taking L of f of t as capital F of s as usual and L of g of t as capital g of s. Now, f of t is equal to L inverse of f of s. g of t is equal to L inverse of capital g of s. Now, by the convolution theorem, we are going to write L of f of t star g of t is capital F of s into capital g of s. Now, as I said, to solve the inverse problem, I need the formula in terms of inverse. So, L inverse of f of s into g of s. If I am taking L inverse on both sides, that is equal to f of t star g of t. For the problem solving purposes, I am replacing f of t by L inverse of capital F of S star L inverse of capital G of S. So, for a given problem, I have to split the function into two. Then, using convolution theorem, I can do this convolution operation and then using the definition of convolution, I can solve the problem. This is the idea about convolution theorem students. Now, you can see the typed version. So, let us do some simple problem. Before that, let us recall 
some important formulas which is involved in the convolution theorem problems now we have to remember this formula integral e power ax cos bx dx the answer is e power ax divided by a square plus b square since we have cos let us write cos bx and then sin bx so we start with a and b simply write a cos bx plus b sin bx plus c done now we have to write the formula for sin bx so here this e power ax divided by a square plus b square is common the same since we are starting with sin i am going to write sin bx first and then cos bx similarly we have to write a and b for cos it is positive for sin it is negative that's it students easily you can remember this formulas next we have to remember the trigonometric formula we know it very well sin a cos b means 1 by 2 sin a plus b plus sin a minus b cos a cos b if the pairs are different then we have sin if the pairs are same then we have cos 1 by 2 cos a plus b plus cos a minus b similarly when we have sin a sin b we will get 1 by 2 cos a minus b minus cos a plus b okay students now we learn what is the definition of convolution and then we learn convolution theorem basic formulas keeping all this thing in the mind let us crack the problems using convolution theorem find l inverse of 1 by s plus a s plus b and very important thing students if they ask using convolution theorem then solve by convolution theorem if they don't mention any method just solve by partial fraction that is more easier for you to solve the convolution theorem first we have to assume f of t is l inverse of capital f of s and g of t is l inverse of capital g of s now we are going in the reverse format first we use convolution theorem and finally we use definition of convolution so l inverse of capital f of s into g of s is equal to convolution of l inverse of capital f of s and l inverse of capital g of s it is nothing but simply f of t star g of t and then next we have to write the convolution definition f of t star g of t is integral 0 to t f of u into g of t minus u du so very important you have to write the convolution theorem and convolution of two functions and the assumptions so that you can easily crack the problem now write the convolution theorem and according to our question we have 1 by s plus a into s plus b first split the problem as like the left hand side l inverse of 1 by s plus a into 1 by s plus b next applying convolution theorem we will get l inverse of 1 by s plus a star l inverse of 1 by s plus b we know that l inverse of 1 by s plus a is e power minus at star l inverse of 1 by s plus b is e power minus bt so we get the terms f of t star g of t so in this problem both f of t and g of t are same so i am not using commutative property i am just proceeding as it is now by the definition of convolution of two functions we have this here f of t is e power minus at and g of t is e power minus bt therefore this is equal to integral 0 to t e power minus au e power minus b t is replaced by t minus u du let me simplify this second term e power minus bt into e power bu du see this term it does not contains any u so it is considered to be constant i can take this out and now we have to integrate the remaining content we have e power minus au into e power bu so i said initially whenever you integrate e power ax or something if there is minus better to take the minus outside since the base is same i can rewrite this as minus of a minus b that we get minus a plus b u i am taking this minus outside so it is easy for me to integrate so e power minus of a minus b into u du you can see the typed version now we know integration of e power ax dx is equal to e power ax by a plus c therefore e power minus bt 
integration of e power minus a minus b u is e power minus a minus b u divided by minus of a minus b the limits from 0 to t. So, e power minus b t I am taking the constants here. When you substitute upper limit we get e power minus of a minus b t and when you substitute lower limit it will become e power 0. We know that e power 0 is 1 and now we have to simplify the numerator. I am splitting and writing this e power minus a t into e power plus b t minus 1. Now, multiply this e power minus b t inside minus 1 by a minus b. When I multiply e power minus b t and e power plus b t will get cancelled. So, we have e power minus a t minus e power minus b t. Now, multiplying this minus inside, we get e power minus b t minus e power minus a t divided by a minus b, which is my final solution students. So, we got the answer for L inverse of 1 by S plus A into S plus B using convolution theorem and the definition of convolution. Suppose in exams, if they ask question like this, find L inverse of 1 by S plus 1 into S plus 2 using convolution theorem. My suggestion is better you assume the general term L inverse of 1 by S plus A into S plus B. Then you can easily crack the problem and you get the solution e power minus b t minus e power minus a t divided by a minus b. Here b minus a, denominator a minus b. Then once you found the answer, you can see the question. I can put a equal to 1 and b equal to 2 according to the question and then substitute the values here you get the answer very easily e power minus 2t minus e power minus 1t divided by 1 minus 2 so we get minus 1 in the denominator multiplying this minus in the numerator we get e power minus t minus e power minus 2t this is my final solution even you get a problem like 1 by s minus 1 S minus 3 doesn't matter. We have to take A equal to minus 1 and B equal to minus 3. That's it. And substituting in this formula, we get the solution students. Hope you understand. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.